Yo guys, how are you all doing? Welcome, of course, as always, back to Rule of Two Review. Today I wanted to discuss a pretty straightforward idea. I wanted to discuss console exclusive titles and whether or not they're still important and still hold weight and relevance in the gaming industry and in people's buying decisions and in whether or not a console actually has value to people. It's uh, pretty important, I think, when we're just a month past the release of Nintendo's brand new console, the Switch, and we know that the Scorpio was right now planned to release at the end of the year. I think that there's a possibility it gets delayed, but considering the fact that they just gave us the specs reveal and we can expect more at E3, maybe it truly will stick to its end of 2017 release date, which would be fine. At this point, the earlier we can get the thing out, the better, because then we can really understand what it's supposed to be. But I've been thinking about this idea of the console exclusive for a while now. I've wanted to talk about it for a few months, Today felt like the day we're about to take off on our big trip to Star Wars Celebration in Florida later this evening, so I wanted to get this one last video in beforehand, and I realized that now was probably a perfect time to discuss this. So one of the things I did to kind of help give me some context and give you guys some context on this conversation is I wanted to just, to just throw out there a poll on Twitter to see what you guys thought was most important in a console. Now this was done the day after it was announced that the Scorpio specs were going to be revealed on Digital Foundry and the day before they did actually reveal them. So I thought it was really interesting to throw this poll out there and see what you guys thought. I asked you on Twitter, what is the most important thing to you in a video game console of these four options and as you see the poll right here of graphics power exclusive games the controller type and the comfort and feel of the controller or the online network the exclusive games destroyed all of the other options as that usually tends to be um i found that to be pretty heartening i mean i kind of really expected people to overall vote for exclusive games, but I didn't know it would be so overwhelming. It's a great sign though, because I think it goes to further prove the point of what I'm trying to get at in this video, which is that yes, exclusive games absolutely do matter. They've always mattered. There was a period where people started to kind of think and say that maybe they don't matter, but at the end of the day, there's no doubt that they truly do. I think the two most immediate cases that we can use as examples for this are Nintendo and Microsoft. Of course, of the big three, that makes up more than half of the console gaming market. We have Nintendo, which literally lives and dies by its exclusive content and its first party IPs. To be fair, the last couple of years, they've managed to show that they can actually get quality exclusive content that isn't first party. Obviously, the platinum relationship has been great. And when you look at a game like Bayonetta, uh, Bayonetta 2, that really goes to show the kind of popularity and success that you can have with an exclusive that isn't a first party IP on a Nintendo console. And forever, everyone has always said, oh, Nintendo should go third party because they want the first party stuff. But Nintendo's not going to do that because they know that they can literally survive throughout all of the crap of the video game industry and the highs and lows just because they have, without question, the most untouchably high quality exclusive content and exclusive games on their system. So that at the end of the day, no matter how much they might release a console that isn't really appealing to people, like the Wii U for example, the quality of the exclusive lineup can still prove to be successful. The Wii U might not have sold a lot of units and a lot of high numbers, but the exclusive games and how amazing everyone knew and recognized they were still managed to sell crazy high numbers. When you look at sales of Mario Kart 8 and Super Smash Brothers and Hyrule Warriors and Mario 3D World and all these different things, Splatoon of course, Nintendo made so much money just on software sales and they were able to survive and still ultimately make a profit on a console that only sold 14 million units in four and a half years. And you have to absolutely recognize that Sony or Microsoft, no other company in the video game industry would be able to achieve that same level of, of success. If Sony released a PlayStation console that only sold 14 million units, they would be drowning in lost money and lost revenue because they're not going to have a title that's going to basically keep a fan base there and continue to make money for them like Nintendo can with all of their first party exclusive stuff. And that's a really big deal. Yes, Uncharted is amazing and it sells really well, but it's not going to do what Mario Kart and Smash Brothers are going to do for a Nintendo console. Now let's look at Microsoft for a second and I'm going to have to warn everybody because the last few weeks whenever I've talked about this concept of Microsoft struggling with exclusive content and you know high quality games coming at a regular pace lately, people have started to just get really angry at this whole idea and, and just be like oh this is crazy you know Sony doesn't have exclusives and what about this game and this game and this game and it's been really interesting and I just am like not trying to just destroy Microsoft here because I like Microsoft and I like the Xbox but we have to look at this realistically guys over the last year the only big high-profile exclusive games were Gears of War 4 
and I think there was a Forza title. I do not follow that series, so don't, you know, crucify me if I'm if I'm missing whenever the last Forza game released. But I feel like a Forza game released last year, that was probably a big deal. So you've got those one, maybe two series. Halo Wars 2 came out this year, not making a big splash, not a big deal, unfortunately, like a regular Halo game was. And that the last Halo game, Halo 5, was like two years ago. So Microsoft is struggling to get consistent exclusive content, whether it's first party or third party or whatever. Then, of course, we have the Scalebound issue, where Scalebound was a pretty high profile exclusive, third party developed from a studio that everyone loves and that potentially was going to be very great and sell very well from a Japanese studio, no less. And of course, we know that unfortunately fell through. So losing that and then not having anything else on the slate right now on deck as far as really high quality, high profile exclusive content is definitely doing damage to Microsoft's name. And that's twofold. One, I need to say everyone will bring up like Crackdown 3 and Sea of Thieves. And there's probably one more that I'm forgetting that I can't think of. That's like an exclusive that's coming out this year for the Xbox One. And that's great. Those are going to be great games for people who are fans of them. I have no interest in either, but I recognize that some people do and that those games are going to be pretty cool for people interested in them. And it's good that they do exist for sure. But those aren't the real system selling exclusive library kind of titles that we're talking about that Sony and Nintendo regularly have and keep them successful. Microsoft sadly and the Xbox One sadly do not have anything like that lined up right now and it's definitely doing damage. Right now Microsoft's name and the Xbox name is kind of getting dra dragged, drug through the mud on the internet right now unfortunately because they don't have a lot of stuff and I do see where that is coming from. I understand what people are saying. I love my Xbox one but with the exception of gears of war 4 i haven't bought an exclusive for that okay i'm sorry there was also recore which is a very good game but it was also kind of like an indie budget title ish to a degree i love the game you guys but it's it's not not a big a big high profile game so i myself have bought gears of war 4 and recore those are the only two exclusive games i've bought in over a year from my xbox one all of these other great games that i have on my xbox one are not exclusive they're multi-platform games, and so those kinds of titles aren't going to sell, you know, the, the masses on just buying an Xbox or just buying a PlayStation or even just buying a Switch or a Wii U or whatever. You need the stuff that's only available on those consoles, and people have started to realize that. The other thing happening with the Xbox One is the fact that they're making all of their content, at least most of their relevant content that would otherwise maybe be exclusive, available on Windows 10 and on PC. And... That is a really interesting business model, not only for the Xbox One, but when you consider what they're going to try to then accomplish with the Scorpio, which seems like they're trying to make it more of a direct competitor to PC gaming than what the Xbox One is. And so what are they doing with this, you know, play anywhere cross promotion PC and Xbox gaming stuff with the Xbox One and now the upcoming Scorpio? Their whole business model is just very strange. So... Microsoft is struggling in that respect right now, and I think that their numbers are starting to slow, whereas they were previously picking up because of the One S being such a great deal, and Sony and Nintendo are continuing to thrive, and they're kind of doing it on the backs of exclusive content. More so Nintendo than Sony, to be fair, because Sony obviously also very much thrives on multi-platform stuff, but they still get regular exclusive content, and people are really excited for things coming out soon, and we're gonna get God of War, and Horizon just came out, and Persona just came out. I mean, the, and there's, there's so much more stuff like that. Last of Us 2 will come out eventually. You know, they're doing a really good job with this stuff, and I have to, I have to kind of applaud Sony to a degree. I like Sony in my PS4, so it's all very cool stuff. You know, in wrapping this whole thing up, I just think that when you kind of look specifically at the Nintendo and the, and the Microsoft camps, they're kind of good examples of where exclusives can help a company who's maybe even struggling because the exclusives are so quality. And when you have a console that's quality but not a good exclusive lineup, then your system starts to struggle and maybe the sales don't do so well and then people start to kind of perceive you as not really being successful or worth anyone's time or money. And it just becomes a whole big mess. And as someone who grew up in the 80s and 90s gaming, which I know I bring up a lot to you guys, you know, I remember when the, the Super Nintendo and the Genesis and the whole Nintendo versus Sega thing really lived and died on the back of exclusive content. And that continued throughout the N64 and PlayStation era, which was also a great area. And then, of course, the notorious 6th gen, where I think the lines were truly drawn in the sands of exclusive content. When you had stuff like Mario Sunshine and Wind Waker, and then you had Halo on the Xbox, and you had, for a while, Grand Theft Auto was exclusive to PlayStation. That went away at, after, after a bit, but at first it was like an exclusive PlayStation thing. And then you had the God of War and all this exclusive PS2 content. 
And that that generation really solidified to me why it's great to have three players in the console industry. I started to see the value in non-Nintendo consoles, and that was a generation that made me a fan of Microsoft and Sony because I realized everyone had something to offer. Exclusive content in this camp, exclusive content in this camp, and exclusive content in this camp. And it made gaming a far more expensive hobby than it already was for sure. But it also made it more exciting and more fun. I like the idea of every console having its own identity and justifying its own reason for existence compared to the other guys by having content and games and titles that you know you can only experience on that platform. I think that's the most fun. So, uh, kind of a rambling sort of video here, so I'm going to end it here. But I think that it's kind of important to talk about. You know, the Switch is probably going to continue to really thrive on the, on the exclusive stuff for a while until third parties hopefully jump on board. And is Microsoft going to figure this out? Are we going to get surprise reveals at E3 of, okay, here's, you know, a bunch of exclusive stuff coming soon that we can finally say proudly is exclusive to the Xbox brand. So buy your Xbox Ones, get ready for the Xbox Scorpio, and this is why we matter and why we're trying really hard to make the Xbox name successful. It'll be interesting to see if that happens because right now they're sadly struggling and Sony's just doing the Sony thing and still managing to be successful so I think that's it guys tell me what you think about the exclusive thing below do you think they still matter and are still relevant the way that I do or do you think like some other people that really exclusive don't matter and they just become a barrier of entry for buying different consoles I'd be really curious to hear what you guys have to say but that's it for now. Next time you see me is going to be a video posted from my, fro my phone from our, our hotel room in Florida after I have a chance to see the EA panel where they're going to reveal Battlefront 2 to the world, and we will be there live. So I'll be discussing that in a couple of days. But that's it for now. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and I will catch you next time on another video.